Maryville is not a city, not a town, not a village, not even a hamlet. It is just a wide place in a row, a quiet, peaceful community where people of several generations have lived and died without ever wanting to see, know, or hear about what world. But talented Daisy May Walker, young and ambitious, was not one of those. Daisy has always wanted to go places, know people, and sing. And now, with the farewell song before leaving for the big city, there are heavy but hopeful hearts for those she will leave behind. Mrs. Walker, Daisy May's mother, prays silently, praying that the goddess of fate will deal kindly with her daughter. Jim Walker, her father, is not much of a praying man, but he's not above hoping. Yes, hoping for the best for Daisy. Mabel, the little sister, well, she's too busy wishing she could go with Daisy to think of anything else. Dunbar Hamilton, Daisy May's sweetheart, would like to be able to keep Daisy in Perryville as his wife and the mother of the five children he wants. But not even such hope could induce him to offer a word of protest of her going away. Ilvari Tatum, her music teacher, hates to lose Daisy. But too, she knows of many other small town girls who went to the city and made good. young lady. Daisy and Dunbar may want to be alone. <laughs> Never mind. Come on. Here's your lunch. Be careful. The cake's on top. But isn't this an awful lot, Mother? I'll never eat it all. I know. But you might meet some hungry people on the train. And you can share your lunch with them. In just a minute. I must get Mrs. Jones's address for you. Now, honey, here's $18. It ain't much, but it'll help out a whole lot. And I'll send you some more as soon as I can. Thank you, Pa. Someday I'll make you proud of me. I am proud of you, honey. I've always been proud of you. And make you proud? Yes, honey. I'm proud of you, too. 
This is Mrs. Jones's address. All you've got to do is to take her this note and everything will be all right. Okay, Mom. That's it, folks. Well, here I go. Well, I'll take the word. Well, good. goodbye, honey. Goodbye. Come on, come on, Miss <laughs> Hurley. about Daisy May. You see, I've known for some time that she wanted to go to New York, and I urged her on for more reasons than one. Of course, I hated to lose her and the tuition her father paid me for giving her music lessons. But when I think of what a wonderful thing it would be if she should suddenly win fame and fortune, well, I just couldn't even think of saying no. Just look at the girls of our race who won fame because of their musical ability. Well, there's Mary Anderson, Dorothy Maynard, Etta Morton, Ella Fitzgerald, Lena Horn, oh, just so many others. And I bet they weren't all down in the big city either. At least some of them must have come from small towns like Harrisville. And so I says to myself, the best thing I can do would be to urge that girl to venture out into deep water. The fish are bigger out there, you know. Yes, ma'am. And you don't feel badly toward me for urging her to look around before settling down and getting married? No, ma'am. Oh, you dear boy. girl with your looks and intelligence should be going to this address, that's all. Is there anything wrong with this place? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the place. It's the people who live here, if you know what I mean. Now, see here, mister. My mother has known the people who live in this house since long before I was born, and there's nothing wrong with them, see? Okay, sister. Sorry, but don't say I didn't warn you. Well, girl, you're way off your beam. Mrs. Jones is in California. She doesn't live here anymore. 
Oh, I'm sorry. But, well, uh, thank you very much. Why don't you come in? Maybe I can help you. Well, uh... You I'll... look tired. Why don't you come in? Let me fix you a drink. Oh, but I don't drink. So much the better. I could use a girl like you. Come into my car. You are looking for a job, are you not? Yes, I am, but... Well, I... my dear, you've come to the right place. Come on in. Let's talk things over. Oh, well, I may as well come in. <laughs> Oh, there's my cab. I must go now. Thank you, Miss, sir. Uh, Miss, call me Mamie. Thank you, Mamie. Don't forget the number. I won't. Step right in, sister. Waiting time runs into money, you know. But I didn't tell you to wait. I know you didn't. But you sure was glad when you looked out and saw me standing here. <laughs> I certainly was. But how did you know? Later, a cab driver can learn a lot in 15 years. Get in. But where are you taking me? What difference does it make? Any place you go will be better than the one you just left. Did she tell you her name? She said, just call me Mamie. But who is she? Mamie Wilson. Everybody in town knows her, including the police. So far, you're a lucky girl. Come on, I'm going to take you to a hotel. It ain't the best place in town, but you can do what you want to do instead of what somebody tells you to do. Come on, get in. Yes? Yes, sir, right away. Boy. Yes, kid, set up. Two, room number twin. You don't get booked in this week. They're going to be on the outside looking in. Yeah, I know they keep saying don't work. Don't work. That ain't going to pay our rent. You got that right. Wait. Here comes Moody now. Well, boys, everything is going to be hunted over. Our truth is booked in the Congo next week. That's the break we've been waiting for. What do you mean, you hope? Well, we've been hoping for this job for the past eight weeks. Well, oh, one more little hope won't work. Now, will it? Oh, Mr. Moody, sit him on, please. Yes, Mr. Crump. I am obliged to inform you that something must be done about paying some of the rent for the truth. The bill is now very much overdue, you know. Yes, sir. That's quite right, right, Mr. Crowley. And I'd be glad you brought that matter to my attention. However, you have no use to work. Prosperity is just around the corner. Just around the corner. Yes, my food is being booked at the Congo Club. And we'll be in the money before you know it. Of course, the Congo is exactly the type of job we prefer. But under the circumstances, I shall advise my troop to accept it. So you just forget about that hotel bill for just a little longer, Mr. Crowley. And everything will be all right. All right, Mr. Moody. I'll wait a little longer. That's fine, Mr. Crowley. That's fine. Well, I guess I'll go upstairs and tell Mrs. And Mrs. Riddle to brush up on that hat. Mustn't let them get rusty, you know. You don't reckon you give us another one. Well, sister, this is it. How much do I owe you? Oh, just give me back that two-bit change I gave you and we'll call it square. You don't seem to be broke out with cash right now. Anybody can tell that you've never been to this town before, and that's why I'm trying to help you. Of course, old Crowley, the man who owns this hotel, ain't above renting a few transient rooms. But as long as you treat yourself right, he'll treat you the same way. So you just go right in there and get yourself a cheap room and take a little rest before going out to look for a job. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Joe Phillips. And I've got a daughter about your age. She's married and doing fine. You see, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck and so long. Good 
Good day, Mr. Phillips, and thank you again. That's all right, ma'am. All right. Another free meal? Oh, come now, Clementine. Don't divide everything we get. Yes, but the trouble is you don't ever have anything. And if we want you to do anything, you never can be found. But just let somebody open up a can of beans and a few pop like two jacks in a box. But you got us wrong. I was looking for Mr. Moody. But, uh, I wouldn't turn down a cup of that good coffee I'll smell. Well, you found Mr. Moody. But the next time you wrap your lips around one of my coffee cups, we'll be after you bought a pound of coffee, some sugar, and a can of milk. 
Well, boys, what do you want? See you do. And I've seen a gal down the stairs. She's cute, too. Say, I don't care how cute she is. What can she do? She sings. Did you hear her sing? Well, no, but she... But she's cute. And that's what we need on this show. Say, oh, for every good-looking girl that comes along, you ought to get married. Hmm. I don't much quicker than one. <laughs> what are they trying to tell you now, Mr. Lewis? Another pretty girl. But you know... Maybe that's what we need on this show. A little beauty. With our brains, we might not stay idle so long of a stretch. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah. Say, what's this girl's room number? Oh, room 20. Okay. You guys brush up on your act. I'm going to pay this young lady a visit. I say it, Dopey. Get that number, man. Miss Walker to do or not. You will, won't you? I'll try. Sure, she will. Add a girl. I bet you can say good, too. Unless you can, too. What's your number, Miss Walker? Well, I don't know anything but spirituals. Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, play Lucy Chatty? Oh, 
very sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but some of my guests are complaining about the noise you make with your relations. I must ask you to quiet down a little bit. Here's a telegram for you, Mr. Moody. I guess that's okay on that job. Hope so. Me too. We sure need it. You telling me? Say, uh, how about joining our show? This calls for a vocalist. And you have two weeks for rehearsal, and I'll give you plenty of time to brush up on the lights and the people. Well, I don't know what to say. I hadn't intended for something like this to happen so soon. I wanted to work at something and perhaps take vocal from a good teacher. Oh, you can do it. You have a million dollar voice. And honey, you will knock them cold. Sure will. That's right. Let's, let's fly for the first rehearsal, and then you can decide. Well, I'll try. Uh, Any mail from Daisy May? Oh, yes. Here's a letter. Well, what's she say? Oh, dear folks, I have the exciting news. Through pure fate, I met up with the nicest group of people who were offering me a tryout in their show at a swell nightclub. They've heard me sing and think that I'm all right. But I'm not so sure about it. I get butterflies in my stomach when I think about standing in front of a, a lot of swell people singing. Well, uh, wait a minute. What's that uh, she said about stomach trouble? <laughs> oh, Jim, that's nothing. Young people just get excited and have a fluttering in their stomach when they uh, get excited about such news as oh. as they to me. You see, that's all. Oh, yeah, 
can know any girl with your voice and look as different as your face. But you've got to have here. You've got to show class. Meet the right people. Visit the right places. The Carlo Hotel is no place for you guys. But I couldn't just walk out of here. I'd like to book you myself. But I just couldn't walk out like that. Don't try to decide now. Think it over. I'll call you tomorrow. that purse that was left on this table after that party left here a little while ago. I'll give you just 30 seconds to tell me where it is. Come on. All right. Thanks, Mamie. And if there's anything missing, I'll be back. And you know, Mamie, if you keep arranging for Richardson to meet these nice little country girls plays, you won't have to call the law. They'll be here. Toodaloo. Uh, excuse me, Miss Walker, but you forgot your bag last night, and so I thought I'd bring it over. Where did I leave it in your cab? Not exactly, ma'am. You left it at Mamie Wilson's place. And since Mamie has had her sticky fingers on it, I think you should take a look and see if anything's missing. Not at all. There wasn't much money for anyone to take, except for perhaps some small change. <laughs> Anything over 15 cents is cold meat for Mamie Wilson. I think it's all here. You'd better take this change. And... I'll pay you more tomorrow for returning my bag. Is that all right? Thanks, ma'am. I couldn't take money for anything like that, and especially from you. But why not from me? Well, it's like I told you, miss. You see, I've got a daughter about your age. And she's doing fine, married, doing fine. You see, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> oh, boy, I didn't know. Well, good day, and good luck. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, here he comes. Well, maybe she's too busy to write. Yes, maybe she is. I hope she's well.
call from Linda Walker? Yes, Mr. Phillips. I have a package I want you to take to the post office for me. Won't you come in? Hamilton, Hamilton's Grocery, at Perryville, Texas. Yes, Perryville, Texas. Mr. Hamilton, this is Joe Phillips here in New York. Yes, New York. Well, you don't know me, but I know a very good friend of yours who's here in the city, and I think she wants to see you right away. Yes. Yes, it's Miss Walker. Well, I don't know, but uh, I think she's in bad company. And if you want to keep her the same sweet little country girl she was, oh, you'll find me all right. My cab is number 15. Yes, 15. Goodbye. Hello. 
Oh, good morning, Mr. Richardson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Richardson. Goodbye. <laughs> for that girl like a ton of bricks the very first time he laid eyes on her. He did? Yeah, and now he's got her in an apartment over on Taylor Street and gives her everything she wants. He says he's her manager, but if his wife ever finds out what he's managing, it'll be too bad for him and her too. Well, I'll say. Yeah, child. And if I was to tell you... And if I was to tell you how bad my feet are hurting me, you wouldn't believe it. Would you mind letting me see that paper after you're finished with it? Were you speaking to me, Mrs. Richardson? Yes. I would like to see that paper when you're finished with it, if you don't mind. Why, uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Richardson. You know, I thought I heard you say something to me, but my feet were hurting. Thank you. Me. Oh, you're welcome. Good morning, Miss Walker. May I come in? Of course, Mr. Richardson. Come right in. Thank you. I was not best with you. That is why I asked you to wait a half hour before you came up. Oh, that's all right. I just dropped in to see how you're getting along. I'm his manager, you know. Why, yes, you are. Won't you sit down? Don't mind if I do. to break into my apartment. Get up on your feet. Come on, you yellow skunk. Now you get on your feet and fight like a man.
somebody. I teach you to come busting in on me. Oh, Daisy's been shot. Honey. Oh, somebody help me. I didn't mean to hit her. Never mind, ah. yeah. Go call an ambulance, quick. Maybe that guy from Texas will try to take Daisy back home with him. If he does, it'll be all right with me. I know what he did to Richardson. He gave Richardson just what he needed, a good beat. We can't afford to let Daisy stay in the hospital until she fully recovers. We haven't got enough money. How much have we got counting at $35 from the kitty? Thirty-seven fifty. But that isn't enough. Ten days in the hospital with a nurse in a private room will cost about $200. That we haven't got. What we need is a job, but we need Daisy May to help us get it. You're going to be all right now, honey. Sure she will. The doctor removed the bullet this morning and found that it didn't do much damage. I think you'd better go now, Mr. Hamilton. Yes, ma'am. I'll be back again tomorrow, honey. You take it easy. He seems like a nice young man. He is. Sure, Carl, is all right. That's all you got to do. Oh, yes. uh, Mr. Carl, this is Mr. Dunbar Hamilton from down in Texas. He's an old friend of Miss Daisy May Walker. Glad to know you, Mr. Hamilton. Any friend of Daisy May's is a friend of mine. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Just call me Dunbar. I ain't used to being called Mr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dunbar. What can I do for you? Uh, well, sir, the doctor said that Daisy can leave the hospital in a few days, and I'd like her to come back here and see at your hotel like she used to. And I'd also like to get a room for myself, too. And I'll see that you get your rent, Mr. Crowder, if I have to pay myself. Now, don't you go worrying about the rent, Joe. Daisy's old room is ready and waiting. I'll put you up in number nine. How about that? That'll be fine. Oh, yes, sir, that'll be fine. Oh, 
Dunbar Hamilton. Uh, glad to know you, Mr. Hamilton. Same here, Mr. Moody, but just call me Dunbar. <laughs> Dunbar is Miss Walker's Texas boyfriend. He's the one that spared her. Why, man, you just the fella we've been waiting to see. <laughs> it's a pleasure to shake your hand. Gang, this is Dunbar, the guy who smeared her. Uh, Dunbar, this is Jones, a member of our show troop. Hey, hello, Dunbar. Glad to know you. Dunbar, this is Clementine Ritz, and it does me proud to shake the hand of a real Texas gentleman. Thank you, ma'am. Daisy told me over the hospital how nice you all have been to her. Oh, Daisy's one of the nicest little girls in the whole world. But let me say, oh, that's right. Come on over here and have a seat. Get up, brother, and let the man have a seat. <laughs> over here in the telegram that Charlie sent up. Bad news? Definitely. Thought we had a job, but it seems that our booking date is crushed out. Oh. Oh, well. Now, honey, if you feel like it, how about singing my favorite? Of course I will. That's Bob, I'd be responsible for your holding the bag. Yep. 
I can. Now, Mr. Lee, you mean it did have everything. You know, I think New York is a little too big for Texas folks like Daisy and me. You see, it just took off on my ranch down there. So I'm going to take Daisy back as my wife. And I've invited the whole gang to go down with us and stay as long as they like. What do you say, gang? <laughs> <laughs> 